But just help us pray today. If you have your Bibles, please turn with us to to uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're very thankful today for all that God's done and all that God's given us, and we just want to continue praising Him, continue uh, thanking Him for all the goodness that He's bestowed upon us. And uh, I'm just very grateful today uh, that He has allowed me to stand behind this, this sacred desk. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 and starting in verse 5. Or excuse me, and starting in verse 4. Verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Now this right here is extending just a little bit above my text. But any time that I get around this verse, I'm going to include it in my text. Listen to this today. And I'm just going to stop just here for a moment before I really get into my text verse. But I want you to have this understanding. It says, Whereby you are given, you are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Now, a few weeks ago, or it's been a few months ago, maybe last year, uh, I preached a message on on uh, uh, this precious promises. Now, can you imagine Peter being a burly fisherman, uh, rough and tough, uh, probably uh, callous uh, to work and callous to the sun. Here he is saying precious. Aren't you grateful today that no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter how callous our heart may have been, or no matter how, uh, no matter how rough we may have looked, we can have that understanding that those precious promises, that that by these she might be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corrupt uh, the corruption that is in the world through lust. And bes besides this, giving all diligence, add your faith. Add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance uh, patience, and to patience goodliness. That's the word we want to look at here today, goodliness, and, or excuse me, godliness, and patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, that they make you that you should neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, it's You today, Lord, that puts the godliness within us. It's not by our nature. It's not what we deserve. or It's not, uh, it's not by chance. Lord, but it's looking to You. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to walk in us. It's allowing the, the God's Word to, to penetrate through us. Lord, it's, it's You. And Lord, we ask today, Lord, You give us strength, Lord, to preach this thought and to look at this message. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray, Amen and Amen. We're very grateful today for all that God's done for us. We're thankful today for just allowing us to say that I am changed and I am no longer what I used to be. As Peter was writing this passage right here, he says, I'm sure in his mind he was thinking years previous before he met Jesus, years previous before his brother Andrew took him to the greatest man uh, that he had ever known, all God, all man, that come to be live in this world to be a sin redeemer for us and he was as he was uh, uh, writing this letter he says now listen there's some things that we must do in our lives and because of these precious promises because of these exceeding great and precious promises our life today must be a life that is full of purity that is not a word today that our world likes to hear our world does not like to hear the word purity. Our world does not like to hear the word that a life that is lived, that is pure, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I love these testimonies and I love to hear these men and these women get up and say how God has changed them, how God has made them something that the world could not, and it's all because of the godliness that they find in God's Word. It's all because of what the Holy Spirit speaks through their heart and say our life must be pure in a tainted world. Amen? As we see here today, there's many things that we can look at. Godliness comes from the Greek word, which meaning, um, which, which is, the meaning is to be right before God and before man. That's what a Christian is. 
We are right. Well, that's what we should strive for. We should strive to live our life that is right before God and that is right before man. We as Christians today have an obligation and we must stand up today and we must step up today and live a life that is pure in this world. We see so many times that a real Christian in a way that we should do, a true Christian, a Christian today, we must live a life that is real. Amen? Amen? I fall asleep on me today. I know it's you may have the you may have the window rolled down and that breeze may be blowing through that, that car and it just feels so comfortable. Just stay with me just for a moment. But our life must be real. There's no imitations here. There's no, uh, there's no, well, I'm just going to put this shirt on today and, and tomorrow I'll take it off when I darken the doors of my workplace. Or I'll take it off when I go to visit my friends. Or, or when the ball game's on, boy, I'm not a Christian because I like to aggravate the rest. That's not it at all today. We live a life that is pure and we live a life today that is in control. Uh, and we allow that life to be in control or under control by the Holy Spirit. That's what we live a life today. We live that life that is under control. We live that life today that is, that is moving and guiding and directing. We think so many times that when, when Paul got saved, he turned his heart over and he started preaching. There was a, a young man that started trying to find him, and, and, and they started seeking him. Barnabas did. Now we know Barnabas was a, a man of great encouragement. A man that, that had a determination to seek out uh, the ones that just needed encouraging. We need more Barnabases in this world. We need more today that's less complaining and more lifting up. Here Barnabas is when everybody else was afraid of, of Saul. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, Barnabas was looking for him. Barnabas was seeking him. That's what it says. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsha, Tarsus to seek Saul. Now we know Saul, his name was changed to Paul. Here it is. We can see that they started preaching. And they started, and when they had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, this was a slanderous term that the world gave Christians at Antioch. It was not a term that you would have a sticker on your car or a, or, or a sweatshirt or the, that has a fish on the front or, or I am not ashamed on the front. It was something that was a slanderous term and meant to be something that was very vile and wicked toward these people. But they took it as a compliment. Why? Because they knew that they were in and under control of God's Word and they were meeting in one mind and one accord. If we want to be a real Christian today and a Christian that stands out and a Christian that is focused totally, full-hearted on Jesus Christ, we must realize that we must be Christians, Christ-like. Not just in Christ in our minds, but in our hearts and our bodies and our heart and everything that we have must live for Jesus Christ. And we must be under His control. Will you say, preacher, I'm pretty strong will. We'll get will out of the way and let Jesus Christ have His way. Amen? We must realize today that it's, they were called Christians first at Antioch. As we move along, we can see here today so many times, as we move along, we can see that, that the believers today had great compassion. Again, we look at Paul. Again, we turn over to, you can turn over there if you'd like, in Acts chapter 26, uh, when Paul was talking to King Agrippa, he said, almost thou persuadest me to be a what? A Christian. In other words, you have come close. Uh, you, you, have, you have done something nobody else has ever done before. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Here Paul is. Preaching to the man. And teaching. Expounding on God's Word. Allowing the Holy Spirit to move upon his life and his heart. To preach and to teach. To a man that had him in bonds and chains. He had compassion. So if a Christian today, as a Christian, we must not just live a life that is under control by the Holy Spirit and under control by God's Word, but we must live a life today that is compassionate. Again, another word that folks just don't like to hear any longer. 
Well, I, I'll be compassionate to the ones that smell good. I'll be compassionate to the ones that just that just look like me, act like me. Years ago, I've, I've told you this before, but where we lived at in West Virginia, uh, uh, every once in a while we'd get people coming. We lived right across the parking lot from the church, and and growing up, uh, you know, you see a lot of people come in and out. And here come this man coming up, and you can tell that he was homeless. You can tell that he had no place. You can tell he hadn't. Uh, he was unkept uh, just because of the circumstances. Uh, you know, this, the the environment that he was in, he was not able to keep himself like we do. Here he comes in and he asked my dad for something to eat. Well, I think dad made him a, a peanut butter jelly sandwich or a ham sandwich. And he come in and he said, boy, I sure would like to sit down. And the only thing thinking, crossing through my, my mind as a young teenager, boy, if that man sits on that couch and my mom was at work, she's going to think that I did it. I said, the couch is broken. You may want to sit on the floor. Dad come in and the gentleman was sitting on the floor and Dad said, well, I don't know why you're sitting on the floor. <laughs> the Lord started convicting my heart even as a young teenager. That man should have been brought into our home and given just the same, cur same courtesy, the same welcome as everyone else that comes into our home. The same welcome of, as, as my classmates. The same welcome as the men and, and, the, and the boys that live there in the community that would come over and visit us. But yet, the Lord convicted me because I was not showing Him compassion the way that I should have showed Him compassion. Just because someone don't smell or not clean or they, they don't look like us or maybe they're our enemy, we still are commanded to show them compassion in our lives today. We're still commanded like Paul was to reach out and to preach. Paul could have said, listen, King Agrippa, you're too far spent. There's no hope for you. But that's not it at all. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's hope today. If you have breath in your lungs, there's hope today. Christian, we must stand up and reach out to the ones that are needing hope the most. We have an understanding today that Christians, and for and we will be in conflict. Christians, we will be in conflict. There's no doubt about it. There's no way around it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We will face conflict in our lives and in our hearts, and we must have that realized today that we are uh, uh, we are not in a playground. We are not uh, looking for something that we think that that we are fighting about. We are fighting a battle today that is real. We are fighting a battle today. Over in 1 Peter chapter 4, and I believe it's in verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, Peter again was speaking just practical things. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glory God on his behalf. What are you talking about, preacher? Do you glory in every tribulation that you do? Well, the, the human side, and the human side wants to uh, just walk away. The human side said, this isn't worth it any longer. The human side just don't want anything to do with the persecution that we face. But in, but in our heart, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to us, and we start realizing, now listen, Christian, if you uh, were not worthy to face the persecution, if you were not living the life that you should be living, you would not be worthy of the persecution that the devil is putting you through right now. But because that we live a life that is pure in a tainted world, the devil will persecute us. That's it. That's it. So many times we think, well, this person, this person never had to go through that. Well, let's look at this person. Let's look at the person that looks back in the mirror. Each time that we go through a persecution, each time that we go through a testing, each time that we go through a trial, it makes us stronger for what we need to do. My hands have been calloused over time and burnt over time from the jobs and that previous job employment that I've done in the past. There's some things that, that really heat does not bother my hands all that much any longer. Why? Because they're calloused. Because they have grown accustomed to that a lot. 
Can you imagine when you first got saved going through some of the trials and the testings that you're facing now? You'd never make it. But the Lord does not put any more on us than what we can bear. And we must realize as we are a Christian and we live a pure life, we will face persecution. We must see here today that we are worth something. Listen to that just for a moment. That we are worth something in our hearts and our minds. We are worth this within us. If you turn over to Philippians, and we'll just write these Scripture verses down. I'm not going to take the time to flip through this with the wind blowing. I've got just a little bit jotted down here in the side of my notes. But just think for a moment. What's the word worth mean? The word, the word worth means something of importance or value. You are valuable in Christ's eyes. You are loved by the one that set all of this into existence. The one that set the wind out here today, you're loved by Him. The one that's allowing those birds to fly over there, you're loved by Him. The one that allowed that fog to be over on the mountains here today, you are loved by our Heavenly Father, the Creator of all this world. You are valuable in His sight. Do you really think that He would send the very best for you if you were worthless? But you are worth something. As we see here today, our worth is not, uh, not revealed in what we do. Our worth is not revealed in what we are. Our worth is revealed by the association with Jesus Christ. Can I get a horn on that one, please? Our worth is revealed in the association in Jesus Christ. You see, Christian, when He died for us, He saved us, and He took up His abiding within us, and the Holy Spirit convicts us, it changes us, it, changes, it encourages us, and it picks us up, and because of our association with Him, we are worth something today. We see here today that the plan for the believer... The plan for every believer is that they live in Christ. That's first for us Philippians 1 and 20 and 21. It says that we live in Christ. That's how Christ wants us to be. We don't live in ourselves. We don't live in our own thinking, our own wants, or our own will. But we live in Him. Philippians 1 and 23. It says that we our perspective for believers is to be with Christ. What are we looking for? What are we shooting for? We as Christians today must realize that we are worth something in Him. And the closer that we come to Him, boy, the more, the more, the more precious He is. And we must realize that we must to be with Christ. That's what we must be today. We must not just live in Him, but we must be with Him. We must, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8, it tells us here that we must live for Christ. We must live for Christ. Our purpose today, our, our plan today, our meaning today in life is not to live after Tim Roach or not to live after a certain person or a certain denomination, but to live for Christ. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, our pattern today that we should live after. The pattern that we should live after today is to know Christ. Did you ever think about that? Brandy and I, when we were started dating, if I said four words from Tusculum to Johnson City, boy, Brother Larry, that was a big conversation. She would talk, she'd talk. Finally, she looked at me one day and says, I've talked enough. How about you? <laughs> Put me on the spot. But I learned just very soon after we started dating that I wanted to know more about Brandy Lamb. I wanted to know more about who she was. And, and I wanted to know more. And I was enjoying hearing her talk because one thing, I learned more about it and another, I didn't have to that way. But I was learning about her. I wanted to know more about her. Because, why? Because I wanted a relationship with Brandy Lamb. 
And that's the same way, but much greater with our, with our Heavenly Father. I want to know our Heavenly Father. I want to have a special relationship with my Heavenly Father. Much more than any human relationship that we could ever have. Goes much further than any relationship that we could have here on this earth. It's a relationship today that is eternal. It's a relationship today that is worth having in our hearts and our lives. I want to know Him. We should see here today in Philippians 4 and verse 13, everyone knows this verse. Everyone knows this verse that was Christians, that our power does not come from us. But all things, all things come from Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Didn't say I can do all things through the free will Baptist. I, I am a free will Baptist through and through. But first and foremost, I am a Christian. I'm a Christian. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am something today. I am worth something in Jesus Christ. Listen today. You may have had someone in your life say that you're worthless. Listen to me today. You may have had people tell you today that you're not worth anything. I'm telling you today that you're worth everything. I'm telling you today that you are worth something. Jesus Christ gave His life for you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You are worth everything to Jesus Christ today. Let's live our life like we are. You may be here today and say, Preacher, how can I live my life for someone that gave His life for me? Well, first of all, you have to realize that He gave His life for you and you have to believe that He's able to change you and you have to confess your sins. The Bible teaches us that all have come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. It also teaches us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. We are not worthy to be in association with Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ bridges the gap for us that allows us to have that access to our Heavenly Father, God above. We have something today, and it's not in who we are, but it's in what Jesus can do for us. So we must acknowledge that He is able to save us. We must believe that He's able to transform us from one person into the other. You say, preacher, that cannot be right. I'm telling you today, it is 100 without any doubt, without any question, it is right today. Jesus Christ loves you. He gave His life for you. And all you have to do today is believe and trust and confess your sins and you will have a friend today like none other. We must see here today that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In this life, you say, Preacher, how do I live a life in this world that is pure? Well, in a few weeks, my family and I hope to be able to take a vacation. If everything goes well, we keep moving it back and moving it back. So in a few weeks, we plan on going, and, and I like going and looking at the big ocean liners that come across on the ocean. As you look at those ocean liners, they're, heavy, heavy, they're laden with freight and they're heavy. And they're just, uh, or maybe go along the high river and you'll see these big barges that are just very, whether it be fuel or whether it be coal or whether it be some other freight, they're just loaded down with. That ship and that barge is completely safe as long as the water stays out of that ship. It's completely sailworthy. It's completely able to go and to do its task without any issues at all as long as the water stays out of the ship. We are able to live a pure life as long as the world stays out of this ship. As long as the world stays out of here, we're able to set sail. We may be battered. We may be bruised. We may, be, uh, we may have a, a, a torn sail a time or two. But we as a Christian today can live a pure life in the midst of a sinful and perverse world by allowing Jesus Christ to fill us so there's no room for the world to come in. So we can be a true Christian by allowing Jesus Christ to come in us 
and by allowing us to be under His control. We can be a true Christian today by having compassion for the ones, even our enemies today, that doesn't look like us or smell like us or act like us or believe like us. We can tell we're a real Christian because we will face trials and tribulations. And you are worth something today. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the other people said in the past. You are worthy. And you are worth something. We see here today that if we want to live a life that is set apart, we must walk the walk. We must walk the walk. And we must not just in, 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 in word, but we must be in deed as well. As we see here today that we walk. And this cost of this walk cost plenty. The cost of this walk today cost Christ everything. And He's allowing us to take this walk with Him. Are you willing to do that this morning? Are you willing to walk the walk with Him today? Are you willing to say, I have Jesus Christ in, in my life, in, as my Savior, and I am walking the walk, and I am allowing Him to use me because I am worthy in His sight. Father, Lord, we love You today. We ask today, Lord, for Your blessing, Lord, to be upon this. Lord, we ask today, Lord, You move and guide and, and just direct in a marvelous and wonderful way. Lord, we need You today. Lord, we need Your presence today. Lord, we love You for all that You do for us. Lord, I thank You today, Lord, for being a God that never changes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. As we stand here today, if we need to come to this beautiful altar that Brother Howard Burroughs made for us, if we need to come to this altar, let's come. Let's come. You say, preacher, I don't feel much worth. I don't feel like I'm very worth anything. Well, in God's sight, you are worth everything. You say, preacher, in my life I've let some things fall that I said I'd never let fall. I'm still saved. I know that. But there's some things in my life that shouldn't be here. Well, get it out. And the first thing for us to do to get it out is to come on our knees confessing them and saying, Lord, I need your help today. You may be here today and say, Preacher, I have never asked Jesus Christ and my Lord and my Savior. Well, you can today. You can today by acknowledging Him as Lord and Savior, by believing that He's able to change you, and by confessing your sins. Here it is. If we need to come, let's come. Have you experienced that marvelous grace? Have you experienced that amazing grace? You can today. You can experience. Christian, have you forgot about the amazing grace? You can settle it today. And you can hold tight. Hold fast to the grace that God has allowed us to have. If we need to come, let's come. Thank you for being here in our service today. Please remember tonight at 6 o'clock we will meet inside. Uh, that's what our plans are today. Uh, either way, we're going to meet, but our plans are to meet inside tonight. We'll still be doing the outside service frat, uh, uh, transmitting with our radio transmitter. Uh, so on 90.5, that is 90.5, uh, we'll be transmitting on all of our services that we have, whether it be in here or whether it be in the parking lot or in our sanctuary. So tonight at 6 o'clock, please come out. Uh, please enjoy, uh, just enjoy the fellowship and enjoy the time. Uh, just give me just a a moment uh, to 